Argument 4 Paul ate at the Lord's table on Sunday. Some Christians appeal to Paul's action at Troas to support the sacredness of Sunday. They maintain that Paul preached and believers partook of the Lord's table, the Lord's Supper, on the first day of the week, Acts 27. If I were advocating for the sacredness of Sunday, I would not use Acts 20, verse 7, because this argument always backfires when all the facts are considered. To begin, the Bible says, On the first day of the week we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking till midnight, and there were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Acts 20, 7 and 8. The first day of the week began at sundown in Bible times. Genesis 1, 5, Leviticus 23, 32, John 19, 31. Therefore, Paul met with the believers in Troas after the Sabbath had passed, and as the first day of the week began, Paul began speaking at sundown and he preached until midnight, about six hours. Consider three facts about this meeting. Advocates for Sunday's sacredness claim the believers partook of the Lord's table, but Acts 20 does not say anything about eating at the Lord's table or partaking in the Lord's Supper. The text says they came together to break bread. Breaking bread does not necessarily mean partaking of the Lord's table. Breaking bread is a biblical expression for sharing or eating a meal. Luke 24.35, Acts 27.35 Notice this passage which describes the activities of the apostles and the church members after the Feast of Pentecost passed. Every day they, the apostles and believers, continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved, Acts 2, 46 and 47. An accident at midnight interrupted Paul's preaching in Troas. Eutychus went to sleep sitting in a window and fell to the ground from the third story. The fall killed Eutychus, but the Holy Spirit brought him to life through Paul. After this miraculous event occurred, Paul went back upstairs, broke bread again, and continued talking until daylight. At daybreak, Sunday morning at daylight, Paul left Troas with his traveling associates because he and his associates did not regard Sunday as a holy day. Acts 20, 19 through 13. Does partaking of the Lord's table on Sunday make Sunday a holy day? Before you answer, do not forget that Jesus and his disciples broke bread in the upper room and ate the Lord's Supper on a Thursday night. 1 Corinthians 11, 23-25 When comparing the actions of Jesus and his disciples with Paul and his associates, whose example is more important? Does either example make a day holy? If so, we would have to choose Thursday as a holy day. Number 2, Acts 27, does not describe a regular church service. The Bible says that Paul regularly worshipped on the seventh day Sabbath, Acts 16, 13, 17, verse 2, 18, verse 4, 19, verse 8. The situation in Acts 20, verse 7 is a farewell meeting, not a holy day worship service. The meeting was held during Paul's final hours in Troas because many of the believers suspected that it would be the last time they would see him. 3. Finally, is it possible that two meals and a farewell talk in Troas could make Sunday a holy day? Does any man have the power and authority to void any law of God? The Bible says that Paul left Troas at daylight on Sunday morning, Acts 20.11. How could Paul teach that Sunday was a sacred day and then continue on his journey on Sunday? 
The evidence in Acts 20 supports one conclusion. Paul and his traveling associates did not consider the first day of the week to be a holy day, even 15 years after Christ's ascension. So argument four does not support the sacredness of Sunday. Argument five, Paul encouraged believers to bring their offerings on Sunday. Another Bible reference is often used to affirm the sacredness of Sunday is 1 Corinthians 16, 2. It is claimed that Paul instructed the believers in Corinth to bring their offerings to the Lord on the first day of the week. Advocates for Sunday worship maintain believers are obviously assembling on that day. Here is the passage, now about the collection for God's people. Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up, so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Then, when I arrive, I will give letters of introduction to the men you approve and send them with your gift to Jerusalem. 1 Corinthians 16, 1-3 through Paul made this request while traveling for two reasons. First, barter was the nature and order of business in those days. Paul could not sail to Jerusalem with donated animals, produce, grains, and other material goods. Therefore, he asked that all donations be converted into cash before he arrived in Corinth. Second, Paul did not want believers in Corinth to wait until he arrived and then rush and convert their possessions into cash. He knew that it would be time-consuming and foolish because hurriedly exchange goods for cash means less cash. So Paul wisely advised that believers start on Sunday of each week, which Paul regarded as a regular work day, to begin the process of converting possessions into money at a good exchange rate. Does Paul request the believers in Corinth to support the sacredness of Sunday? No, not at all. If a person wanted to send a gift to the suffering saints in Jerusalem, Paul advocated taking care of business starting on Sunday, the first day of the week, a regular work day. So, argument five does not support Sunday sacredness. Argument six. Early Christians worshipped on the Lord's Day. Some advocates for Sunday worship will admit that political history could have influenced a disregard for Sabbath worship and exalted the observance of Sunday as a holy day. However, realizing that Sunday sacredness requires divine authority, they reject the idea that the Roman Emperor Constantine could have changed the day for worship from Sabbath to Sunday. They also reject the idea that the Council of Laodicea, A.D. 363 to 365, could have changed the day of worship. These advocates often use the argument that early Christians observe Sunday, because early on they call Sunday the Lord's Day. There is only one text in the Bible that suggests which day of the week is the Lord's Day. It is the seventh-day Sabbath. And he, Jesus, said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Marks 2, 27 and 28. Jesus uttered these words after some Pharisees condemned him and his disciples for picking ears of grain as they walked through the grain field on the Sabbath. The Pharisees said to him, Look! Why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Mark 2.24 Jesus condemned their legalism by putting the topic of Sabbath observance into proper perspective. First, he forced them to admit that long ago, King David and his companions had eaten the consecrated bread from the temple without incurring guilt. Mark 2.25 and 26 this happened because King David's need for food was greater than the priest's entitlement to it. 
Using this principle, Jesus made the point that picking ears of grain on the Sabbath while walking through a field was not considered working. The Sabbath was made for man's benefit. He and his disciples were hungry, and food was within easy reach. Contrary to what the Pharisees thought, the Sabbath was not created as an object of worship. Instead, Jesus wanted man to worship the Creator on his holy day. Then Jesus, speaking as the Creator, declared, Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Jesus meant, I not only made the Sabbath for man's benefit, my conduct as the Lord of the Sabbath also shows how the Sabbath is to be observed. It is true that both Sabbath and Sunday were called the Lord's Day in early church history. There is an interesting reason for this. In AD 70, the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and took the surviving Jews back to Rome to work as slaves. The Romans intensely hated the Jews and they considered the followers of Christ to be a sect of Jews. After all, Jesus was a Jew. Therefore, Christians sought to distance themselves from their Jewish identity in various ways. One technique was to call the Sabbath the Lord's Day. Since a Jew would never call the Sabbath the Lord's Day, this was a good way to maintain distinction. About AD 95, when John was exiled to the island of Patmos for his faith in Jesus, he was given a great vision on the Sabbath and John used the phrase the Lord's Day. On the Lord's Day I was in the Spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches. Revelation 1, 10 and 11. Meanwhile, in Rome, many Romans worshipped on Sunday. It was a weekly holiday for recognizing and celebrating Mithra, the Roman sun god. Romans observed Sunday in a manner unlike the strict legalistic ways the Jews observed Sabbath. Over time, Christians in Rome, to avoid any association with Judaism, began to amalgamate their beliefs with the followers of Mithra and call Sunday the Lord's Day. Their reasoning was that Jesus came from the tomb on Sunday. But Sunday is the day on which we all hold our common assembly, because it is the first day on which God, having wrought a change in the darkness and matter, made the world, and Jesus Christ our Savior on the same day rose from the dead. Quoted from Justin Martyrs. This is the first recorded instance of early Christians justifying the sacredness of Sunday. The justification martyr used for holding a common assembly on Sunday is interesting. First, he cited the separation of darkness and light on the first day of creation as grounds for holding a common assembly, and then he referred to the resurrection of Jesus. Martyr offered no scriptural authority for the assembling on Sunday, but his remarks indicate how he justified meeting on Sunday. Justin Martyr wrote this remark in AD 150, and today millions of Christians erroneously think that the Lord's Day is Sunday. Certainly this is a long-held tradition, but the association of the Lord's Day with Sunday is based on Jewish aversion rather than Scripture. So argument six does not support the sacredness of Sunday.